Hi, you might have already heard something about a hypothetical black hole in our solar system. But what I wanted to do is to look at the original article more closely and discuss its main points in detail. Well, in short, two scientists, Jakob Scholz and James Unwin, proposed the following. What if the long-sought Planet 9 isn't actually a planet, but rather a primordial black hole of planetary mass? And that's how the article is titled. What if Planet 9 is a primordial black hole? It is kind of obvious why this news went viral. The idea sounds quite extreme. That's the article. First, I gotta say that at the moment of shooting video, the article remains a preprint. What it means that it's not a full-fledged scientific article, it hasn't been peer-reviewed and published in a scientific journal. The advantage is that publishing a preprint, scientists can quickly tell scientific community about their results. After all, reviewing and publication can usually take a while. On the other hand, the final article can have some changes or even not get to an actual journal at all. But let's get back to the article itself. First up, what does it have to do with Planet 9? Objects in solar system gravitationally interact with each other. Obviously, more massive objects have bigger influence and it was even used for some discoveries. For instance, the existence of Neptune had been predicted before it was directly observed, based on the unusual behavior of Uranus on its orbit, which turned out to be influenced by another massive planet, Neptune. In most cases, solar system's dynamics is somewhat clear, but after discovery of several trans-Neptunian objects, some scientists began to see an anomaly. Some orbits of Kuiper Belt objects are well explained by the influence of Neptune. But there is a group of bodies with unusual orbits that couldn't be explained in the context of solar system with eight major planets we all are used to. Their orbits are clustered in such a way that their perihelion is located roughly in the same point of space as we can see here. But it's expected that they should be random. Orbits are also tilted and some objects even have almost vertical orbits relative to the ecliptic. All these anomalies could be explained by the presence of another massive planet farther out in the solar system. It could be a planet as massive as 5 to 10 Earths with the highly elliptical orbit, eccentricity 0.2 or even 0.5, 15 to 25 degrees tilt and semi-major axis 400 to 800 astronomical units. Which means, at its farthest, hypothetical planet 9 would be 800 times farther from the Sun than Earth, 27 times farther than Neptune and 20 times farther than Pluto. All right. Orbital anomalies, mathematical calculations, that is all great, especially knowing that it worked before. But the problem is that Planet 9 hasn't been yet found. Some people might ask, how could we not find the whole planet? But it is not that simple. From the data scientists have now, they can only estimate the approximate part of the sky where Planet 9 could be hiding. And it's the area of about 800 square degrees. It's 3200 times the area of the full moon. Here you can see the search area between Orion Belt and Taurus. That is why we need the most powerful telescopes that at the same time have wide field of view. And there are only few of those in the world. For instance, the Subaru telescope, which is used in the search for Planet 9. In addition, we don't know its precise signs and reflective properties. If it were brighter, it would have been found by now. But we can say that all those limitations tell us that the fact that we haven't found it yet doesn't mean that it doesn't exist. And now let's get back to the black hole. What if the planet hasn't been found? Not because it is farther away or dimmer, but because the object that shapes TNO's orbits can't be seen with optical or infrared telescopes. What if it's not a planet, but a black hole? Sounds quite extraordinary. As I said before, the necessary object should be about 5 to 10 Earth masses. The basic idea is simple. Gravity is gravity. Objects of similar mass would have similar gravitational influence. Perhaps it's not a planet, but a black hole of the same mass. Firstly, it's obvious that we aren't talking about supermassive black holes. And stellar black holes that form when massive stars die range in mass from several to several tens of solar masses. How can we have a black hole only five Earths in mass? It is possible in principle. 
Theoretically, if I could squeeze hard enough, let's say, this phone, it would become a tiny black hole, and the lowest theoretical mass for creating a black hole is Planck mass. At the same time, the lower the mass, the higher pressure we would need to apply. We can just make a black hole in a lab today. We don't have necessary technology or energies. Nowadays, the known process of black hole formation is gravitational core collapse. But there is another type of hypothetical black holes that could form in the early universe – primordial black holes. They are thought to form during the first second of the Big Bang. We could think that the time span is too short, but during that phase everything developed fast. For instance, here we can see that significant part of events happened during fractions of seconds and seconds. Primordial black holes could form before the first stars. During the first second, universe was less uniform and denser regions condensed and collapsed into black holes. And mass could vary from Planck mass to tens of thousands of solar masses. There is even a hypothesis that primordial black holes could be seeds of supermassive black holes. Okay, how big would a black hole be if its mass was five Earth masses? Actually, it would be so small that authors of the article managed to fit a one-to-one -one illustration on the article's page. Its calculated Schwarzschild radius is 4.5 centimeters or 1.5 inches. At the higher end of 10 Earth masses, it would be the size of the bowling ball. But besides just orbital anomalies and plain idea, is there any evidence that authors suggest? There is some. They mentioned OGLE, Optical Gravitational Lensing Experiment. According to the authors, data accumulated during five years shows several anomalous gravitational microlensing events. Gravitational lensing in general occurs when a massive object bends space-time and alters light trajectory, just like an optical lens. In case of microlensing, the effect appears when some dim object that we can't see directly, like an exoplanet, passes in front of the background star, and this planet magnifies the light of that star for a short period of time, and we can see it on its light curve. This is one of the ways to discover exoplanets. Six events mentioned in this article were ultra-short, lasting only from 2.5 to 7 hours, and the objects causing the events are thought to have masses from 0.5 to 20 Earth masses. And that is in the range of Planet 9 mass. That could either be rogue free-floating planets or primordial black holes. But some of you might ask, but what about Hawking radiation? And according to this hypothesis, black holes can evaporate, and the smaller the black hole, the stronger the effect. Could such a small black hole survive to this day, if it even existed? According to Stephen Hawking's calculations, microscopic black holes probably have already evaporated completely. But a black hole with a mass 10 to the 11th or 12th kilogram could survive to this day, and that is many orders of magnitude less than our hypothetical black hole in the solar system, which means it could easily survive. Going back to Planet 9, there are three ideas of how it could end up so far away from the Sun. One, it formed much closer to the Sun and then migrated farther away. Two, it formed where it is supposed to be now. And three, it formed elsewhere outside our system and then it was captured by solar system gravity. According to the paper's authors, the third one is the leading scenario. If there was a population of primordial black holes of planetary mass in our galaxy, and if those microlensing events indicated their existence, authors hypothesize that solar system capturing a primordial black hole is as likely as solar system capturing a free-floating planet. Therefore, Planet 9 could be a black hole. Of course, right now there's too many hypotheticals. But at the same time, authors offer the way to test this idea in an experiment. So, how can we detect such a small black hole? Primordial black hole theories suggest that they could be surrounded by dark matter microhalos. And some dark matter theories suggest that dark matter particles can annihilate and the result of that is a gamma-ray photon. And that we could detect with telescopes. If scientists find an unexpected source of gamma radiation in our solar system right where Planet 9 is supposed to be located, it might become an argument in favor of the existence of a primordial black hole right in our backyard. And actually some gamma telescopes, for instance Fermi, could have already detected those signals, if they exist. And the next step is to look for them in Fermi's data. Yes, right now the article is just a preprint. 
the hypothesis itself is quite extreme. But if it actually turned out to be a primordial black hole, not only it would prove their existence, we would also obtain the opportunity to send there a spacecraft and study directly an actual black hole.